Hey traders, welcome to today's end of day recap. This is Christian from Ertz Tribeca Trade Group. So uh, let me start with the indices as I always do. Uh, S&P just down a little bit today, down 18 basis points. We did get a little bit of volatility in the morning. You know, it's kind of, it's been a very, very tight range. Uh, you know, I've been talking about the same thing every day. Um, again, we have separation in sectors, but in the S&P, it's been very flat. There really hasn't much been, hasn't much uh, going on, just a lot of digestion in the overall indice. Uh, it just doesn't look like any new money is really being put to work. It just continues to be a rotation in and out of different sectors. Uh, we've been seeing that all week long. Just doesn't look like really any new money is going is being put in um, to the market right now. So um, you know, just to kind of look at the the day's action um, on the five minute chart. You know, one thing to notice again yesterday was we took out this uh, this VPOC. Um, I make a lot of reference to these because they're really really good indicators. You could see yesterday again we hit it, we touched it, and went right and we reverted right back. Today you could see uh, you know futures were fine right around the open. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong, that's uh, the overnight session. Futures were fine right around the open, and then, you know, sellers came in again, um, and it was even more evident in the queues. Queues got beat, beaten up a little bit uh, today. They finished down 60 basis points, but you could see they were down more than that. Again, just a lot of selling going on right in the first half hour of the day, something that we've been seeing a couple times now in September. You know, September, it is what it is. It's a week month it's the weakest month of the year so you know one thing to notice here is this upswing that we had for the mac uh, macd you know this was a nice real nice signal that we got and a couple nice days and then a lot of digestion uh so you know we could fall a little bit further here the level that i would watch in the queues your support uh, I'll just flip to the Qs because I know a lot of people look at the Qs rather than NASDAQ futures, but right around 144.25, I would, I would uh, watch that level. Uh, so notice we have a, uh, a bear MACD crossover in bullish territory. So maybe it'll be short lived, but just remember what happened the last time that we had one of these also in bullish territory. You know, we had a tough month. Uh, this was all of August where we basically went sideways and had some volatile days. So maybe we have more of that going here. You know, I can start to draw another line in here if we start to break this, but really what I would be watching is that 144.25. And we'll see how this works its way through. But it's been like this all week. Uh, NASDAQ has underperformed. So where's the money been going or what's what's been moving? Well, small caps have been outperforming a bit. They were basically flat today, uh, just down 10 basis points. Again, a lot of that has to do with the financials. Uh, the biggest weight in IWM is is financials, is region, regional banks. So they've had a real nice couple of weeks. Um, also, healthcare names, which have been doing pretty well. You know, if you look at the XBI ETF, which which again is a lot of small cap names. It looks like it's actually trying to like, you know, we've had this nice move here and it looks like kind of a pennant type um, type pattern. So continuation to the episode, it actually tried, we try to go higher here and kind of failed for the day, but I would say it's a must watch area right now um, to possibly lead us higher. So uh, we'll see, we kind of didn't get there today. So uh, I would call kind of call that an inside day today. Uh, so what did we do today in the in the in the trading room? You know, it's it's the same drill. Whenever we have this um, this volatility right in the first half hour of the day, you kind of look for for setups and especially names that have some strength to them is what I look for. You know, there's two things that you could look at. You could look at names that are have gotten really beaten up and a reversion. Um, or you could look at some names that, that are that have relative strength. I tend to sometimes look for relative strength. So we went around and looked at all the momentum names. Netflix had some news this morning. I think someone uh, increased their price target. And, um, and we looked at this. Uh, so this was a real nice trade for me. And I had looked at this a few times in the first half hour. I set an alert. Where did I do that? Right at the top of value. So alert one hit. Um, I looked at it and I said, you know, we're not uh, we're not above value right now. So um, I decided not to do anything. Um, I reset my alert. It hit it again. Um, the price above value. I looked at it again. I did not get a close for the for the second bar outside of value. So I just said really nothing to do. Reset my alert, and uh, it hit it a third time. Uh, the alert. 
and uh, I waited a little while and waited uh, on this bar and then I said I'm going in so um, I think a couple subscribers traded this today um, they may have not waited for me they may have gotten in here a little bit cheaper than I did but I bought weekly calls for for I think it was 37 cents and I hit targets all the way up and past a dollar which was in here. I think the calls ended up marking around a dollar forty um, today, so I missed that last leg of the performance. But hey, I was happy with basically a triple on uh, Netflix weekly. So really, really nice pickup. Again, it's the same drill. You kind of wait and and watch for the indices to kind of a. Uh, uh, take in that selling pressure and, and adjust a little bit. Um, and then there's usually some opportunities. The other name that we played today was GE. This is not a name that I've played in a long time, but you know, notice that there was uh, something different that happened here, which, which was some nice upside momentum. So um, I got into GE right around here. Um, and what's nice about GE is the calls are not, it's not a momentum name. So the calls are cheaper. So I bought, I bought weekly calls kind of as a lotto for 13 cents. And hit targets, I think, as high as 30 cents. I'm trying to remember if I hit one for 35. Um, I don't remember. But what I did at the end of the day is, um, because after I was even into this position, we saw a whole bunch of call buying, um, you know, right in here and in here. Uh, so they, they actually purchased 55,000 of these November 25 calls and also the March 24 calls, which were swept. So... You know, you look at the chart of GE, it's been pretty nasty. Um, that's the way I would describe this. It really takes a lot for me to get involved in something this ugly looking. Um, so what I did was I rolled, I, I took off the weekly position and, and rolled it out to December and said, hey, if they're buying November and they're buying March, um, you know, maybe this has gotten to a, a certain level that's pretty cheap. If you kind of scroll out, you'll see that uh, there is some support down here around $23 in GE. So I'll play this for a bounce. This is not gonna be a long trend uh, trade for me. This is something to kind of just maybe play for the week tops um, for GE. But again, it really takes a lot for me to get involved in something, a chart that looks that disgusting. Um, and 50,000 plus November and, and, and almost 20,000 March calls will do it for me. All right, so that's uh, th those were the two trades I thought for the day. Um, just to kind of recap the option activity. Oh, uh, did I go through the sectors? Uh, you know, sectors that outperformed today. Uh, the defense names, we did, did see a GD call buyer as well. This name's finally gotten out of range. So I did take this trade as well as a swing trade. I've been watching this, uh, this name for a while. Uh, General Dynamics, it's been a lot of chop. So it's finally getting out of here. Let's see if it can um, manage to break above this whole range now. So um, if it doesn't, I'll, I'll abandon those calls, but we'll see if we can get a runner here out of, uh, out of General Dynamics. Um, I mentioned the banks have been very strong. They continued, they were up 40 basis points. Um, the home builders were also positive today. And then on the flip side, you know, we talked about some of those momentum names, uh, the steel names, which again, don't do pretty well when there's a stronger dollar. Uh, SLX, the steel ETF was down 2%, XME also down 1.8%. Um, also overnight, the uh, steel iron ore futures were also down pretty decently. So that caused uh, some pain in some of the steel names. Um, also the Chinese internet names, they were down a clip today. So, you know, this is, this is good. Um, I, you know, I'm really looking for a dip in this group. So if we happen to get back to maybe into 5641, I don't know if they're going to dip that much after three days. Uh, there was a JD put by right around the open this morning, but I would love it if we get one more red day. Uh, I think I would, I would be a buyer or, or watching this group, this group pretty closely. But again, you have to have a little bit of patience. You know, the, why I like this group is because it's, it's been the, it's been the best performer um, year to date. As far as groups go, this is up, uh, you know, 67% year to date. So any dips I try to buy in this, in this group. So, you know, last time we, we got a dip here, we ended up going from 54 bucks all the way up to, to 59. So I'm looking for a similar swing like that. Um, so that's pretty much today's summary. Uh, you know, there, there was a lot of, I will say this, there was a lot of big chunky put positions. You know, normally I don't uh, take down too many put positions just because um, we just, there's really not that many aggressive ones. Usually there's a lot of like hedging puts, but not too many aggressive puts bought. In the beginning of the day, there was a lot of puts and semiconductors. Again, Lamb Research, Marvell, um, I don't think they really worked too well. 
Um, and also AMD, which Tesla later came out or AMD denied that story about um, AMD chips being a, being a, a part of Tesla um, uh, and, their, and their AI division, I guess. Um, also RCL, which I know CCL reports earnings. So I don't know if this is something for earnings, but they, they went after RCL puts a couple times. eBay puts, Hog puts, JetBlue puts, all these purchased aggressively. There was some dip buying going on. Uh, Facebook weeklies, that was a nice signal. I did not take that one. I was already involved in two, two uh, day trades, so I just couldn't take a third one. But that was close to the lows of the day. It was a nice move. Um, PXD, First Solar is going to have uh, some news coming out either tomorrow or next week. So there's been some two-way flow. Beginning of the week, there was puts being bought, last two days calls being bought. Um, NTNX, nice move in that stock today. A little bit of call buying. JP Morgan, same thing there. BlackBerry, repeat call buying. Uh, Broadcom, I think they, they bought some December calls. I'm not sure if they rolled those all out from October. I did see some calls being sold in October. Um, IAC, a little bit of calls at the end of the day. MIK, more calls here. So they continue to go after calls in this one. Um, so that's it for today's recap. Have a great night, and I'll see you Friday morning. Thanks, everybody.